One thing I enjoy about you, you've got some definite views on certain parts of the industry. <laughs> and a big new thing in the industry is, is high dynamic range. And high dynamic range, we're really playing with the luminous levels and other aspects of monitors. And in a way that could be detrimental as well as you know, bring something to the picture. But you've got some definite views on this. So, First of all, let, let's talk about those views and then I want to get into 2084 and hybrid log gamma and what your opinion on they are. It's like anything. Um, it, 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 it has the potential to be interesting, it has the potential to be bad. Yes. The problem is that a lot of people just jump on these bandwagons and we've seen it before with the likes of stereoscopic 3D, uh, I mean, we're going through the VR scenario at the moment um, and, and HDR is another of those. Obviously HDR has now become kind of um, you know, linked in with um, UHD TV and the, the concept of Rec 2020 and all the rest of that. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those things that it, it can have an interesting um, ability, but it can also be a complete waste of time. Uh, you know, it can hurt. And it's getting that, that kind of level of application that, that, you know, to make it something that isn't just a gimmick. And, you know, and what I find is that people jump on these things without realizing the impact. Um, one of the, the big issues with HDR is that you know, we, the way we see the world isn't restricted to a given screen size. Right. So they all talk about, you know, well, you know, the real world has a huge high dynamic, high dynamic range, and it does. But that's because we are looking at it with very specific areas of focus, right. and our visual system responds accordingly. When you're looking at a, a monitor that is a, a given size yes. and has a specific viewing angle, you are actually seeing that within uh, the, the eye's static dynamic range capability. And basically, if one area of it becomes super bright, yes. the eye can't respond because it's, it's not an area that we can isolate and react to accordingly. So it just means it hurts. And it's, it's this kind of concept of how big does the screen need to be so that we can actually use our um, dynamic response to contrast rather than it being so small that it is within our static response. And that, that at the minute, people just don't seem to understand. They just assume that brighter is better. No, it's not necessarily the case. I, I completely understand you uh, and understand what you're getting at, especially last year at the Future of si the Cinema Conference then, there was a doctor who was talking about how fast our eyes yeah. can... To, it, can it can take minutes to respond. I mean, if you do the classic, if you... Um, actually, the perfect one is an aircraft. Yes. You know, you're, you're sat inside a tube that's relatively dark, even when the lights are on, but the, the, the windows are a relatively small area and outside tends to be very bright because you're above the clouds but if you look out the window and then when you look away yeah. you've always got that burnt in image of the window in your retina and it will take minutes to go away and that's the problem is that you know we cannot respond quickly to seeing to, you know, to those kind of brightness changes so when you're telling a story you know as part of a film or whatever if you go from a bright scene to a dark scene quite often you are going to miss what's going on because your response cannot keep up, your eye's response cannot keep up with those changes. Well my, my being devil's advocate, my argument to that would be that high dynamic range is a new art form and it can be used to do what you're saying. You yep. could keep everything in the same yep. nit level as you do a 48 nit feature, it, uh, yeah. but um, then you have the choice to bring it out when you want yep. to. A average picture level of, yes. of HDR theoretically is the same as SDR. That's right. So you know the, the, your, your concept of that is, and the idea is that you just pull up the spectral highlights. The problem is that spectral highlights, more often than not, don't have a lot to tell for the story. They are just there as a gimmick. You know, do I need to see detail in uh, a reflection off of a chrome object? Mm, not really, because that's not where the story is. What I need is to is to know where to look to follow the narrative and to become you know, involved in that story. If all of a sudden you get this massive bright highlight that just bangs out of nowhere, it's gonna jolt me out of the actual story. So you, you're, you're sort of explaining to me like in the 3D days, where they'd stick the, the yeah. spear outside yeah, and be no, going, ah. There you go. There you go. So we're at that stage of HDR in Europe. That, that is my, my take on HDR. You know, I, to me, it's a gimmick. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's nice. You know, it, Going above 100 nits is, is good. And to be fair, nearly everybody's home TV is way above 100 nits because, of, you know, of course, they're viewing it in an environment that is bright. So, you know, most home TVs tend to be what? Let's say 400 nits, let's say. Um, but using a standard power law gamma. 
and it just makes the whole image brighter to yeah. overcome the fact that you're not in a perfect viewing environment. And that's cool. That's right. HDR has a, 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 an EOTF that actually maintains the, the blacks really dark and then gives you the spectral highlight. Right. Now the problem with that is if you have an HDR display in a normal home viewing environment, you actually can't make the whole image brighter because you're already using the entire capability of the display to do HDR. So now when I'm looking at it in a lounge with you know, the windows open and the, you know, it's, a, it's a bright outdoors, how do I make that image brighter to compensate for the surrounding light? Couldn't you say, see one of the, one of the advantages I thought we could get with HDR is that uh, because of the environmental issues that you just said, yep. is that TVs could, for example, have luminance level detectors and potentially adjust the image. Not with HDR. HDR is nits based. Yeah, if but you're talking about the PQ curve concept. Yeah, but you, you could still lift where the PQ ends mathematically in the monitor to bring it above a sort of only, lower only by only by changing the EOTF. That's no, right. To no longer be a PQ curve. Yeah, you're adjusting the PQ curve for the environment. But, it, but it's no, it's no longer a PQ curve. But you, uh, the, 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 the specification. I know the specification says this. This yeah, bit level equals this bit yeah, level. Yeah, but that's in an idyllic environment. We're talking about an unideal environment. Yeah. So, so you're no longer following the, the PQ curve. Yeah, I'm okay with that if it gives me a better picture. And, and that's exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. But that means you're no longer a standard. You're doing yeah. something to just make it look pleasing to you. But that's what they've done in televisions forever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's where the, the BBC and uh, NHK's HLG uh, version right. of HDR comes from. That is meant to be something that reacts to the environment around you. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. No, if, you, if you look at the, H, the HLG spec, yes. it actually has um, a, a, um, a modifier for the gamma curve based on the surrounding luminance. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And that's not that's not taken into account for 2084 then. No. Oh, well, that's I learned something today. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, the, 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 the HLG concept is uh, uh, sorry, hybrid log, log gamma. gamma. Um, actually is a more, in my, my view, is a more real world scenario because it, 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 is, it is A, backwards compatible, but it also takes into consideration the environment that you find yourself in. Um, and if you, know, if you look at, uh, on, on Lightspace, you know, we have both the PQ curve and the HLG stuff right. in there, and you can build a gamma curve, EOTF, based on you know, their specification. And with the HLG side, you know, there is basically a basic value where you say, my surround illumination is this many nits, right. and it will change the profile of the OTF based on that. It's the it's the first um, standard, if you like, that actually does that for real. Wow. Okay. Well, everything seems to be in 2084 at the moment, so I'd be keen to it's, see it, that in it, action. It, 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 at the minute, obviously, 20, 2084 has been ratified by yeah, SIMT right. in in the EOTF form, yeah. obviously it's still not done for the, the, the concept of, of, of gamut mapping and what have you, um, but purely for the brightness component, that's the simply standard. Uh, at the minute, the HLG is, you know, is non-ratified. But it, 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 to be fair, it makes a lot of sense. It I, think it, I, I can see where you're coming from, and everything you say has very good common sense to it. And, but you know everything is a compromise at the end of yeah, the day, so it, it'll yeah, land somewhere. We, we, you know, we are in an entertainment industry. Yeah. You know, to be fair, what we do is to is to try to generate images that people find appealing, right. that they enjoy, and one of the biggest parts of that is is being absorbed into the story that you're watching. That's exactly right. And you know, the best films are the ones that that, that actually absorb you, no matter where you That's see right. them. And my assessment for a good film is where did I see it? I don't remember. Yeah. You know, I, did I see it in a, in a, a big theatre, a big surround screen? Did I see it at home on my whatever, I've got 43 inch whatever? Or did I see it on the back of the seat in front of that's me right. flying to NAB? That's right. <laughs> and that's a good film. That's right. The, the technical aspects of the image are actually secondary. Right. I, I completely agree with you. It's like, a, that's why to a degree, I thought 3D in cinema was interesting, etc. But when I'm watching a real film that I really like and I'm really enjoying, I actually see past the 3D and I'm looking, watching the story and yep. not the film. And yep. that's how I feel about a lot of the content. And, it's, then, and, it's, and it's true of everything. You know, th there were certain 3D projects where it, the, the, the stereoscopic aspect added to the that's story. They were, that's right. But there weren't many. That's there, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and I've got to be honest, that's HDR. That, there, okay. you know, there, there are unlikely to be many projects where it adds to the story. Unfortunately, all the things I've seen, every time that kind of HDR component 
uh, is applied as in it goes bright I am jolted out of whatever I'm watching I am no longer part of the story yeah, I'm now sat in a viewing environment because it's gone bright yeah I understand what you're saying but my opinion on what you're describing here is as follows um, we are we are very much adapted to judging things in the first few seconds that we see them yeah right so if I see um, a standard definition and a high, de a high de definition image of the same content, yep. I would most likely um, initially be taken to the high definition because it's got a very visually yeah. more impact. It's, it, 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 it has a high impact component. That's right. And so it'll have traction for those reasons. Yeah. Uh, I agree in terms of a story is a story and when you watch a good movie, you're watching a story, HDR, non-HDR, 3D, non-HDR, non-3D, the story is really, it's like content is king, the story is really what people come to watch. Yeah. And we cannot negate that and really that's what we're selling at the end of the day when we go to the if, cinema, etc. If, if, if things are used as um, uh, tools to add to the underlying concept, then it works. I mean, you know, how often do you sit back and watch something like um, you know, the Maltese Falcon or you know, a, a classic black and white film that probably has a, a very uh, a deep depth of field um, and yet it, it's compelling to watch. Compare that to you know, modern projects where you know, it's super colour, it's got a very shallow depth of field. You know, they both work if it adds to the story. Yes. And, it, you know, and to, to be fair, that, that's what we're in. You know, we're in an industry where we're trying to make people enjoy the experience of watching something. And it needs to be something that just goes along with the story, not becomes the reason that you're watching it.